Hey guys, it's Adrian and today I'm taking a look at UVC Floodlight Cam E340. We now have 24-7 continuous recording which the previous model didn't have. There's also two lenses on this camera, so there's a high quality 3K lens that's capable of wide angle view up to 135 degrees field of view. And then there's also a 2K lens as well which is capable of 3x optical zoom and they're both at f1.6 making them great in low light conditions. There's also AI detection and subject lock and automatic tracking which makes this super handy for monitoring anyone around your home. And let's not forget about the very bright 2000 lumens of output, but let's take a closer look at the performance and see if it's a perfect match for your home. Thanks to Yuffie for sending this out for review, but let's get started. In the box we have the E340 floodlight camera, we have a security sticker, quick start guide, positioning sticker, mounting screws, we also have a S-hook to help with installation and a USB-C charging cable. The E340 has a very imposing type of design. You could see that, imagine walking by here and seeing these two huge floodlight panels and these two cameras, you know, just tracking and panning your every move. I love that there's no protective dome over the two camera lenses this time around because people can easily see that they're being tracked and monitored. Lens housing contains the 3K and 2K cameras, an LED status light and infrared sensor. The two massive floodlight panels can also be adjusted so they can be angled down and to the sides of the unit. Revealing access to the speaker, a UFI logo and a huge motion sensor panel. The underside of the unit has a weather sealed panel that can be removed and it gives access to the USB type C port for first time installation, the micro SD card slot and a sync button. There's a screw thread at the top of the unit and that allows you to take the mount from wall mounting to overhead mounting. And of course the floodlight cam is IP65 rated so you don't have to worry about leaving it out all year round. Specs include a 3K camera at 135 degrees field of view at f1.6. There's a 2K camera at 3x optical zoom also at f1.6 and it's capable of 8x hybrid zoom. There's color and IR night vision, 360 degrees panning and 60 degrees tilt. 2000 lumens at 4000 kelvins which is dimmable. There's 24 seven continuous recording, human vehicle and pet AI detection subject lock and tracking, up to 128 gigabyte micro SD card support, an IP65 rating, two-way audio, dual band Wi-Fi 6. To add the camera to the Eufy app, we'll click the plus icon here, go to floodlight camera, pick E340. I'm gonna add it to my existing home network and I'm gonna scan the QR code located at the back of the camera. Press the sync button for two seconds. Select a 2.4 or 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi band and input the Wi-Fi password. Connecting to the Wi-Fi network, please wait. Setup was successful. Before I add the Floodlight Cam E340 to the Homebase 3, let's take a look at motion detection. And I have options for human, vehicle, pet, and other motions. Now, if I go into general, storage, local storage, I have a 128 gigabyte card inserted in here. So I have about 119 gigs of usable storage. To add the E340 to the optional home base 3, we'll click on Edge Connection, click Continue. All recordings will be stored locally from now on. We'll click Yes, click the home base 3, and click Next again. Now that the home base 3 is added, let's go back into motion detection. And you can see we have a new option here that says Human Recognition, so it can actually recognize people by face. Now let's go back out of here, go into General Storage, Local Storage. And you can see it's now gonna be using my one terabyte hard drive that I've just inserted into the Homebase 3. So feel free to add your cameras to the Homebase 3, but don't worry if you don't have a Homebase 3, it's completely optional and there's still a lot of standalone functionality, even without it. So before I mount everything, I've pulled up the live view and I could see that that's working perfectly fine. So the next step is to install. I'm gonna be wall mounting my camera. So to go ahead and do that, I'm just gonna slide down right here and you can see this gives me access to the pre-ran wiring. Now these are color code so when you run the wires from your junction box through this opening, you're just gonna connect the corresponding colors and then screw them down to tighten. Now to make this job easier, you can actually lift up this wiring harness right here, run the wiring through as I showed, you're gonna connect it there. And then when you're ready, you're actually just gonna hang the floodlight camera using the supplied S-hook so that you're not holding it the whole time while you're running the wiring. Once you have the bracket connected to the wall with all the wiring, you're just gonna line up the camera body, slide down and fasten two screws on the right and left side, and you're done. If you're finding this review helpful so far, please consider liking and subscribing, but let's get back into it. In the UFI security app, we can go ahead and start live view for the Floodlight Cam E340, and you can see that I have it set to the dual view mode, so I have two vertically stacked displays here, and it's streaming in 3K quality currently. 
Now, what I can do is if I saw something interesting while I'm looking at live view, I can go ahead and manually record as well. I could turn on sound on or off and I can press and hold this icon to just talk to whoever is outside. Now, I also have manual pen and tilt controls that I could use right on here. And if I go over to the next screen, this is where I can switch into four preset patrol modes that I've set in the app. I'll show that later. And of course, I can also turn the light on and off manually as well. Swiping over, we can also take a screenshot, set the night vision if we want this on, you know, black and white color or off. We could turn on AI tracking or turn it off, do a 360 round look, super handy. And we can also jump right into playback and then we can calibrate it. When we go into the full screen mode, you can see it defaults to the 1X lens with that 135 degrees field of view. But I can also go into the 3X optical zoom, give that a second to load there. And then of course I can further zoom in to that 8x hybrid zoom and you can see that says region of peel so you know it's actually pretty usable on here with the 8x hybrid you can also trigger an alarm manually in live view in the full settings we can turn the camera on or off and take a look at the wi-fi strength if you have a home base 3 you can also add it under edge connection this is completely optional though under light settings we have a few options so we could control the lights via alexa or google assistant we can also turn these on manually and you can change the brightness there's also motion activated light so the light would kick in whenever it detects motion and then you could set how long you want the lights to stay on for 30 seconds to 15 minutes and of course you can change the brightness. Under ambient light, we can set a schedule for when we want the lights to come on so we can set it by day and by time. And there's a really cool feature called sunset to sunrise. And what that's gonna do is take a look at your geographic area and set the lights to come on and come off based on the sunset and sunrise. Under motion detection, this is where we can set activity zones and this allows you to set up to two different activity zones where you'll receive notifications from. We can also specify the detection type and some of these were added because we added the option optional home base three. And then we can also set the sensitivity and I find it works really well in the medium level. And we can also enable AI tracking, which I highly recommend. In detection range, there's an option called out of view detection and it allows the camera to detect motion outside of the visual range. Now you can also set a detection range so you can set it to the lowest setting here where you'll have a very small radius. And then you can also set it to far, which is what I have it to. You can also set it from standard to advanced to automatic. And I found that I have good results under standard. Under pan and tilt settings, you can enable AI AI tracking from here as well. You can also go into pan and tilt and change up pan and tilt speed. I have it set to the fastest, which is what I prefer. But let's go into preset positions. In preset positions, you could set four user defined points that are interesting to you. So you could set the first one and just click set as the default position. So I've set four different points and you can see the camera just quickly pans to each of those preset points. So super handy to have. We also have an option for auto cruise, which lets the camera jump between those four points that I showed. Now you can also create a schedule. So I could say, hey, from these days, from this time to this time, go ahead, spend 10 seconds at one point and then advance to the next point. So you can stay as low as 10 seconds up to five minutes before it advances. In the video settings, we can set it from color to black and white night vision, and we can also determine if we want a watermark or not. Under view mode, you can set it to dual view or single view. And if you do set it to single view, it says you'll automatically be shown the view from one or the other lenses. I prefer to see both lenses at the same time. Under streaming quality, I have it set to 3K, just in case I wanna record something from live view, it's gonna be recorded in 3K. Under recording quality, again, I have it set to 3K. I just want the best possible video. And then you can also set up privacy zones if you need to you know, block out a neighbor's driveway. So you could see you could set up to two different privacy zones. And if you decide to ceiling mount the floodlight cam, you can also rotate the image 180 degrees. Under audio settings, this is where we could set the speaker volume and determine if we wanna have audio recording or not. Under notification, you could decide what type of alerts you'd like to receive, either human vehicle, pet, or all other motions. And you can specify a cool down time in between alerts. You can also set it to get notifications very quickly or with a thumbnail with a slight delay. Under general, we could change a camera name, turn the status LED on or off. I prefer to have it on so people know the camera's functioning. And under storage, if we go into local storage, this is where you would normally see the capacity if you inserted a micro SD card. But since I've connected it to the optional home base 3, it shows me the capacity in the home base 3. You can also share the camera with other family members. Viewing videos is quite easy. So you'd go to the events tab and you can see I would hit the filter and pick the floodlight cam E340 because I have more than one camera and I have a variety of different clips that I could take a look at. Now, if I click on this first clip here, you can see it's pulled it up in the dual view because I have it that way. And from here, I could just go ahead and download this clip to my phone. I could share it, 
donate it or delete it or make it a favorite. If you've chosen the 24 seven recording option, there's an additional icon right here for playback. So let's click into that. Once the playback timeline is loaded up, you can see that we have blue and yellow areas. Blue areas are just the general 24 seven recording and the yellow areas are when something specifically was detected by the local AI. So you can easily jump to segments in the video. Super handy feature to have. Video quality on here is awesome and it doesn't matter if you're looking at the 3K lens with the 135 degrees field of view. The video is nicely exposed and there's no blown out or highlighted areas. Now if you look at the 2K lens with the 3X optical zoom, Again, same thing, you know, the image is nice, sharp, clear. The 3K lens is plenty capable, so you can see at 135 degrees field of view, I can easily see my car, depending on the tilt level, and I can also see my neighbor's car and a little bit of the road on the left side as well. Now, if you want a little bit more detail, you can use the 2K lens that has 3X optical zoom and 8x hybrid zoom. So anytime the car was parked on my driveway, I could easily make out the license plates and it didn't matter if I was using the 1x lens or that 3x optical. And I would say from 30 to 45 feet, I could easily make out license plates using that 3x optical zoom without needing to punch in further. Now, it was only when I went to say like, you know, 55 and 60 feet away that I needed to use the 8X hybrid zoom and that worked well. I could actually make out a license plate and the night vision quality was also awesome on both of these lens, whether you were using the wide angle or that 3X optical lens and it worked really well even with black and white night vision or color night vision using the floodlight. Since we have two camera lenses on here, we also have two options when it comes to pulling up live view video and reviewing recorded video. Whenever you set it to single view, you're gonna get recordings from the 1X lens at 135 degrees field of view at 3K quality. And if you pull up live view, again, it's gonna default to that camera lens, but you do have the option to toggle to the 2K 3X optical zoom right from live view as well. You set it to the dual view mode. Anytime you review recorded video, you're gonna see vertically stacked video with the wide angle at the top and that 3X optical zoom at the bottom. And that's the same for whenever you pull up live view. Again, you're gonna get that 135 degree wide angle view at the top and the 3X optical at the bottom. And anytime the camera pans and tilts, it's a synchronized video feed. You get that wide view and that zoomed in shot. The AI tracking on here is just stellar, especially when paired with the sensitivity of the motion detection and you know that quick pan and tilt speed. So I left my motion detection sensitivity to medium and it was easily able to track people and cars. So you can see in these clips as cars come down the main road and turn onto my street or as they leave my street and turn onto the main road, the camera and the AI tracking on here is just so good at locking onto those cars and following them as they leave the frame or as they leave the motion detection range. And that also applied to people as well who are crossing directly in front of my house or off to the camera's right or left side. It easily tracked them, pan, tilted, and I could easily make out the details, you know, what they were wearing and even facial features. Not only did it track excellently during the day, it did it at night as well. And you could see in some of these video clips, you know, I'm kind of like lurking around the car, trying to simulate someone trying to break into a car, trying the door handles the trunk and it easily, you know, tracked me all the way through. And it didn't matter if it was set to, you know, the black and white night vision mode or the color night vision. A bunch of functionality when it comes to the pen and tilt. So of course you could do this manually. My preferred way though is of course to leave it on the AI tracking because of just how responsive it is with the motion detection and, you know, tracking vehicles and people. You can also set four preset kind of patrol points that you can kind of navigate to in the software. Now there's also an auto cruise option where it's gonna cruise to those four preset points that I mentioned. And you could set the interval to, you could set a schedule, hey, only cruise, you know, during these days at these times. The floodlight also gets plenty bright for nighttime video. So the maximum output is 2000 lumens at 4000 Kelvin's color temperature. Now there's a couple of options for activating the light. You could do this manually. So you're looking at live view, you see something suspicious. You can also set it to be motion activated and you could set the brightness output, you know, how bright you want it to come on and how long you want it to come on for. You can also schedule the floodlights to come on during preset times of the day. But what's even better than that is what I use. They have a feature called um, sunset to sunrise. And what it does, it looks at my geographic area and it looks at when sunset and sunrises and the lights come on and come off at that time. This is what the audio sounds like at 80% volume. It's clear and there's no audio breakouts. This system accepts up to a 128 gigabyte micro SD card and that's what I put in here. Now for the most part, I have my camera set up to the dual cam view and I had it set to record at the max resolution. 
Now, instead of setting it to event-based recording, which is the default in the app, I set it to continuous recording. So I'm just getting, you know, basically no miss type of events, which is what I prefer. And I was getting about eight days of video playback history. Now you also have the option to connect this to the home base three, which is completely optional. But if you do, you can enable, you know, more AI functionality and storage of up to 16 terabytes. If you're trying to decide between this new model of the floodlight cam and the previous S330 model, well, here are the main advantages of the previous model. It has up to 3000 lumens of light output. So it's a thousand lumens brighter than this and the color temperature is also adjustable, but that's where all the benefits end. So the previous model only had eight gigabytes of onboard storage, whereas this has 128 gigabytes. This also has continuous recording. The previous model only had event-based recording. Of course, you can set this to event-based as well. You also have two lens on here and the max resolution on here is 3K, whereas on the previous model, it's 2K. So all in all, this is just a better all-rounder. So if you're looking for a floodlight cam, either for your garage, you know, entryway, backyard, the floodlight cam E340 is probably one of the best options out there, especially now that it has continuous recording. The motion detection on here is just so sensitive and the AI tracking is just super sticky and focus and when you pair that with having you know 3k video wide angle view and the 2k at 3x optical zoom there's pretty much nothing that you can't lock onto and track wherever it is around your home and of course like with all eufy cameras there's absolutely zero monthly fees a huge consideration anytime i'm picking a camera system so if you're interested in learning more about the floodlight cam e340 or picking one up for yourself i'm going to leave some links down below and i know i've loved just having mine installed and monitoring my car and my driveway because my area where I live is prone to a lot of car thefts and it's just added peace of mind knowing that this can easily track, detect, and illuminate whoever's trying to come near my car. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing and stay tuned for my upcoming video on the video doorbell E340. But if you can't wait until then, you can also check out this video right here and I'll see you in the next one soon.